Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for the privilege of worship. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the privilege of worship. Thank you, Jesus.
Say it with me. I give you the praise, the praise.
armies. You are the king above all the earth. Have so much for connecting. Thank you for joining us in this live service today. I believe the life is going to be blessed and I believe God is going to be touching you specially. I want to thank Eden TV for having us. It's such a great privilege to be partner with what God is doing in and through the media space. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much for turning in. Right, If you are not subscribed to this YouTube channel, I believe that you should do that channel that is going to be a great blessing to your life, right? So subscribe, touch the notification button. It's one channel that I believe is going to grow your spiritual life and create a hunger in your spirit. I've gone through their content and it's rich and I believe it's going to be a blessing to you. Praise God. So make sure you subscribe and touch the notification button and make sure you share the broadcast also. It's going to be a blessing to your family members and friends. Praise the Lord. I have a topic before me that I will be having a discourse on and it's believers and evangelism. Usually, if you see my face, that means you know it's always concerning missions, right? Um, the work of evangelism is a global work. It's not just a work for a local operation as it were. God created that work to be a global work. And you see, the assignment of evangelism or for soul winning is not as it were given to angels or given to supernatural beings is giving to men. And one of the major reasons why the work of evangelism or soul winning is giving to every man upon the face of the earth is because supernatural beings have not had the privilege and the ability to experience what salvation is. And for you to be able to effectively witness of something, you must have an experience about it. Now, when there was a fall of some angels from heaven, they never had the privilege of repentance. There was never a room of repentance given to them. So they, they don't understand what it means to experience salvation. Christ didn't die for them. He died for us. And that is why unto the unto principalities and powers, the church is going to unveil the manifold wisdom of God. So the persons that have the responsibility or the people that have been saddled with the responsibility of reaching the lost are those who have experienced the life of Christ. If you have not yet experienced the life of Christ, you cannot witness it. Praise God. And that is why you see, angels cannot witness. And so Colenos was in his house, and he was a devout man giving to the ministry of prayers. He was one giving to intersection, giving to, to arms and, and to the poor and the rest of them like that. But he had a supernatural encounter. You know, this encounter was so spectacular that an angel appeared to him and gave him vivid information. There are some of you who are born again today and you have never even experienced the ministry of angels. But here is Colenos, not born again, but then fellowshipping with God and trying to know what it means to really have a relationship with God. And God began to give him details, information to go and meet a man called Simon, Simon Peter, so he can tell him what he can do. Who well, am I amazed? How can God encounter the man and not tell him what to do to receive salvation? How can he not just preach the gospel to him, but he had to refer to a man? It's as if you want, you are asking the Lord, I want an encounter. And after a dramatic supernatural encounter, you are taking all there is you have received, but yet God is referring you to a man. Do you see how wonderful that is? God is not giving you all the details, but he's referring you to a man that is going to give you the details. 
And now here is Peter coming. Do you know one of the amazing things in that story is that Peter came into the scene and Peter never, as it were, was informed or he was never informed by the Lord what to tell Colinus. All he had was a trance. And God making you to understand, don't call what I have called clean or clean. That's all. So you could see that God entrusted Peter that when he opened his mouth, reconciliation will proceed out of it. The words of reconciliation will come out of it. That is how God trusts a believer. What made God to trust you is not necessarily because you are just born again, but because you have his spirit domiciled in you. And that spirit inside of you has the ability to teach you. The spirit is a teaching spirit. It gives you utterance. And that utterance has the ability to compel men into salvation. And so God didn't necessarily need to speak to Peter what to say. He had what to say. But the emphasis here is the fact that God, although encountered Colinus, yet how to send Peter. And why Peter yet spake, the Holy Ghost fell upon them. Do you understand? The system of salvation is that men must believe the gospel. And there is no way they can believe a gospel that they have not heard. And there is no way they can hear without a preacher. And the good part of this story is that you have been saddled with the responsibility. You are the preacher and you are sent. Everyone who is born again, everyone who has experienced the life of God, have an experience to witness of that life. Don't say you don't know what to say. So long you have experienced salvation, you have a message. You know, sometimes people feel they have to be so learned, so educated, so vast in the scriptures. You have to have a background of theology. Now there is a place for that. But everyone who has experienced Jesus, even if you don't know the full entirety of the story of the Bible, you have a story to tell. Your story of salvation is a story to tell sinners. I know once upon again you tasted the life of sin. You know what it felt to taste sin. If you really have been genuinely born again, you have encountered the life of God. Then you also know what it means to encounter the life of Jesus. There is a contrast between these two lives. And you know what it entails. And so you can literally give a testimony of what that life is. And you know scripture will say in 2 Second Corinthians chapter 5, when you read down to verse 20, he said that we are an ambassador. The word ambassador is the word envoys. We are a representative of a kingdom. You see, I want you to keep kingdom in your mind as we talk, to, as we talk tonight. We are representing a kingdom. You know, in the normal setting, for you to be an ambassador of a nation, you must first of all have, there are many criterias that you must pass before you can be an ambassador, right? You cannot be someone who is just born into the nation and you are being an ambassador. You don't work like that. You are not vast with the culture, you are not vast with the information and the history of the nation, and so you are not qualified yet to be an ambassador of that nation to another nation. But the moment you got born again, God took the risk, despite your lack of information, to give you the grace to be an ambassador. And that grace was the deposit of His Spirit upon you. And He gave unto you the ministry of reconciliation. So every one of us who are born again, we are saddled with that responsibility. We are that envoy of a kingdom. We are representing a kingdom here on earth. Glory to God. And the kingdom we are representing is a spiritual kingdom. And the goal of the gospel is to reach the ultimate part of the earth. Tonight, I want to spend some time explaining the four tools that can help for global evangelism. Anytime we think evangelism, I don't want your mind to just go local. Because you feel missions and evangelism is just for people going to the village. And so most often when I tell people I'm a missionary, what comes to their mind is, that, okay, so that village should be. If that's not the concept as it were evangelism is not just for people in the rural regions evangelism is a global is a global idea that Christ has brought it's God's strategy to win the world and so you will see that scripture will understand go here into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature that means everyone who is unsaved is qualified to receive the gospel most often some of you are praying and you are looking for God to give you direction which, which village to invade, which individual to preach to. But I, to be sincere with you, God has given you the direction already. Go ye into all the world. The crusades we hold around, most often I don't receive a supernatural instruction 
said, oh, this is the village. So long there are sinners in that place, they need the gospel. And God is sending you there. Unless you come to a point where you are restrained by the Spirit of God, then you can, you can, you can not enter those, those regions. For example, Paul the Apostle wanted to enter Asia at a certain time. He wanted to enter Bethany at a certain time. And the Holy Ghost forbid him. And he, and he had a vision in the night and the Spirit said, go into Macedonia. That was a season of harvest for Macedonia. So I'm saying, unless you are bidden by the Spirit not to, then you should not enter. If not, everyone that is a sinner is a candidate of the gospel. And the gospel you are giving unto us is a global gospel. The Bible says you shall be a witness unto me both in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and unto the altermost part of the earth. And whenever you think evangelism, think a global approach. Our approach toward the work of evangelism in our contemporary times have not been so much effective. There were things that were, that were, there were, things that were effective in certain dispensations that is not effective now. Let's take for example. This system of money cry, right? Money cry. There was a time when money cry used to be so much effective. Money cry was so much effective. People got saved a lot through money cry. It's not as effective as it used to be before. It's not. The idea of, of, of boss evangelism is not as effective as it used to be before. I'm saying as technology increased, as civilization increased, our methodology towards the advancement of the gospel in various fairs and, scat and, and scratters should also advance and increase. It's as if the church are still at a standpoint and the world is advancing. We still want to use the same methodology we have used some years back to win a civilizing generation. And it can't work like that. We have to grow with our, with our, with, with our wisdom and mental in approaching the things of evangelism. Evangelism. And you know, we are not changing the message, but we are changing mentors. So the message will still remain the same. We are not saying because you are meeting a Gen Z generation, because you are meeting a generation that is that is engaged with so many things. So we want to come to a point where we merge, we have a club, believers club. And anchor says that so we have to reach them in their way. So we have a believers club. No, that is not the goal. We are not saying to become like the world so you can win the world. We are saying come up with modern strategies to reach a generation. So the weak have become as weak. This generation is engaged with social media. That can become a tool that we can use. You can't be orthodox and say it's not all about social media. There was days that you see publicity were made without social media. That would be that those days have, have gone. You are in the new era, in the new age. You have to follow suit. And so there are four tools that can really aid for global evangelism. And I believe it's going to be a blessing to you. Number one of them is financial power. Financial power. Now, you know, when you hear finances, many people just, all their mind is just that these people have come again with demanding for money and seed. It's not that. Don't think in that, in that regard. Let's see Zachariah. Zechariah 1 verse 17. <clears throat> Thank you, Spirit of the living God. Cry yet, cry yet, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, My cities, true prosperity, shall be yet spread abroad. How will the cities of God be spread abroad? True prosperity. How will the cities of the Lord reach the nations of the earth? True prosperity. I'm saying we have come to an age and a time where there are so many people who just want to carry the microphone. Who want to be on the pulpit. But there are many of them who have lost their relevance because the pulpit was not, was not for them. There are people God is calling into the financial sector. Evangelism have grown just beyond taking your Bible and walking on the street. There is so much you can do with, with having the power of finance at your disposal. Having the power of finance. My city through prosperity shall be spread abroad. And question, what is the city? What is the city? Because scripture say, the city set on the hill cannot be hidden. So that means to say, the city in context is not necessarily what you will, our, our local city as it were. They are individuals. 
that the Lord is sending. Don't forget the individual are envoys. They have the ministry already of reconciliation. As the Lord is spreading, the, spreading their scope and influence, the gospel is also advancing through them. And in the end time, prosperity is going to be one of the major medium to which the gospel is going to advance to the nations of the world. Prosperity. Poverty is not the poverty is not the will of God. Let me let me let me let me say it because some people feel that the fruit of the spirit is poverty. It's not part of the fruit of the spirit. You are not more righteous because you are poor. The gospel needs to be advanced, and people will have to. You see, the gospel is the gospel is free, but the medium of advancing the gospel are expensive and costly. And for us to evangelize the nation, the Lord will have to raise kingdom financiers. There may not be a there may not be a terminology like that in scripture, but what I mean is that God will have to raise men that have financial power, that have the ability to command result by the resources they have. By the resources they have. Imagine, for example, just state for example, you have a company. You are an ordinary believer in the local church, planted in the local church. You are growing spiritually and you have a company that is a multinational company. And you have said every Thursday, all the workers of the company for lunch, we have to come for a fellowship. They have to sit down and have a discourse. And you, you bring a pastor every Thursday to preach on their lunch table. They are Muslim, atheists, Buddhists, and the rest of them that will still be seated in that congregation. They have no option because they are working for you, the company. They will sit down for the discourse. And before the meeting starts, your pastor come up and preach a message or you have somebody that preach a message, people will get saved through those mediums. They will get saved. Gates will be open. There are, there are cities today and regions where some years ago, for just because we are on, the, on, on air, right? Some, some years ago, I went to a village and the pastor told me something very very touching and he said few weeks ago the children of Ishmael I think you should, you, should, you should understand that the children of Ishmael came to this village and they were giving people five five thousand to convert to their religion and many believers people that come to my own church was giving the money they collected the money and switch religion imagine what that can do Imagine you go to those same villages and you open schools. Do you, do you know why the, the, the mid early missionaries were able to penetrate some of these regions? They came with education. They opened free school, free hospitals. Now there are many villages today that we can enter in showing the love of God through this medium with our finances and penetrate. But yet we feel, no. Oh, Ecclesiastes will tell us that money answers all things. You say, sir, is it that all things are some things? I said, scripture say all things. It's not Melvin that said it. It's Solomon that said it. One of the wisest men that flows on the earth. Money answers all things. There is just so much you can do with finances. You need to have financial power to, to penetrate certain territories. There was one of Jesus' disciples. He was not part of the twelve. He was not part of the people that will hold the microphone because some of us, we just feel everybody will hold the microphone. We feel our relevance in the church is when we, we, are, we hold the microphone and we are called apostles. But let me tell you the truth. Your relevance is not when you hold the microphone you are called apostles. God has called us to different fairs. He has given gift to men. They are apostles. They are people calling into the ministry of administration. They are those called to the ministry of helps. And in the ministry of health, the financial part is part of it. We have to carry each other body. Every time Jesus Christ had to speak to multitudes of people and he wants to leave them to go, sometimes the disciples want them to just go like that. He said, are they eating? Yeah, yeah. Now he's not speaking in tongues. Have they eaten? Is there something to feed them? We have people coming to our local assembly. And some of you are saying it's not all about the food. It's not all about the cloth. It's not all about dashing people money. But that is why the crowd is coming to their places. You call them fake, but yet crowd is visiting their places consistently. You that is original, what are you giving to people? And you are wondering why you are not having the crowd. Why you are not meeting the needs of people. I'm saying, friends, 
as much as we preach the gospel and the gospel is powerful, it has the ability to break the heart of men. But sometimes you will not have the access to preach to men on the empty stomach. You need some financial authority to do some certain things. The disciples of Jesus called Joseph of Arimathias. It came to a point where all the disciples, all, including Peter that really loved Jesus, it came to a point when they deserted Jesus, they didn't even know wanted to be associated with him. It was at that point that a financial disciple, one who had power financially, you know what I love about that scripture is that he was called a disciple. Last week, my mentor was here and he taught on discipleship. So, if he was called a disciple, that means he was properly schooled with the word. So, I'm saying the kingdom financier we're talking about are not those who are stealing government money. Those are not the people we're talking about. Not the people in fraud star. They are not the one we are talking about. We are, they are people who God has given inspiration by the wisdom of God. They are able to make wealth. I would say he gave you wisdom to make wealth. Those who God have empowered to make wealth. They are the ones I'm talking about. Those who are under a pastor. Those who have a pastor under them that they listen to. Those who know the word of God. Those who have a value for God's word. They are the ones I'm talking about. So Joseph Ari Matthias was a disciple. He had value for Jesus. He listened to Jesus' messages. And when the season came, when the preaching apostles deserted Jesus, do you know what happened? That man was the one that went to heaven and said, give me the body of Jesus. I have a tomb that have not yet been used. That's what we are going to use. When Jesus is, had need at a certain time, it was those financial people that helped him. Do you remember where he, where he ate the Lord's Supper? He said, go and tell the Lord of that house that the master had need of it. It was in his house. It was in his house. Sama is going to be with prosperity who will advance the gospel. And I'm saying this so that you can understand that your financial power is a basic tool for advancing the gospel. And so for some of you, you have to take your work seriously. For some of you, you have to take more extra courses on that, on that field of study. Because it's going to be the tool that God is going to use to advance the gospel. It's going to be the tool. Tell yourself, wherever you are, money is not evil. It's not evil. It's the root of all evil, but it's not evil. It's money in the hand of a sinner. That's evil. So, it's not the money that is the evil. The man, the heart of a man is what is evil. Because we are seeing that men have, have handled certain levels of wealth from scriptural days. And we are seeing that they have genuinely returned it back to the Lord. Return it back to the Lord. God is not glorified in your poverty. That's not what will make people to get born again. Carry some level of wealth. Value finances. And you see, for some of us who will have to enter into those financial sector, we are people that are going to take time to value education, value information, right? You are not going to just come like that. You see, yesterday my mentor said, he said, it's rather you grow into wealth than blow. Grow into wealth. Not the time to blow. You know, you know the, the, the disadvantage of blowing. If, if you are not in Nigeria, you might not understand that. The disadvantage of sudden appearance. Do you understand? Sudden wealth hits your account. What happened, for example, those who are into fraud that we all do respect. Now, it's that, these are some of the things that happen to them. Their financial life end up coming to a point where it increased overnight. But listen, their influence have not increased. Their mental ability have not increased. Their experience and exposure have not increased. But when you grow into wealth, what happens is that you will end up having five, ten persons around you who are also wealthy that you have grew up with as a well. And when the money falls, it's the money that fell. It's not you that fell. So a true wealthy man that grew into wealth have the ability to replicate the wealth. No wonder you see wealthy people always exist around themselves. Because the moment you exist around a wealthy man, you have the information to keep yourself wealthy. What makes a man wealthy is not the bank account primarily. It's the mindset. 
the mindset. So you take away the money from them and you find out that they will still rise again. Have you not seen Chet Fox, the hundred richest people or probably the richest people, you will see in the table sometimes they will fall. They will fall from being the wealthiest person. But before you look, they are up back again. Why is this so? The wisdom to produce the wealth is there. It's not a blowing mentality. And so that would means you have to take time. I'm saying God is not in the hurry to make you. He's patient. He's patient. You want to become wealthy? God is patient in making you wealthy. The strategy of God is, is kind. Do you notice that God was interested in changing Eli from authority? And God was not in a hurry. God began to look around and said, who are we going to use to replace Eli? Who will we use? He checked Israel, he could not see. And then, why waiting? A woman came and started praying and said, I need a child. Please give me a child. Lord, give me a child. If you give me a child, I will give the child back to you. God looked at her and said, do you mean what you say? He said, yes. So no problem. I'm saying, God is not in the hurry. You are the one in the hurry. You are the one in the hurry to make it. God is taking it gradually because he has a plan for you. And God looked at her and said, no problem. This one I'm giving you is not really your child. It's mine. But I'm going to give you five other later. But this one, give him to me first. And he gave her a child. And he was patient. Yet Eli's son had misbehaved him, but he's patient. He's patiently waiting for that child. The child comes out and the child begins to grow and he's patiently waiting. And you say, but God, you are prophesied. Why is the prophecy not coming to pass? He said, I'm, I'm preparing the man for the prophecy. Not in the hurry. You are the one in the hurry. He's not. And so for the wealth, he has called you to become a wealth apostle. You are going to finance the gospel, finance crusades around the nations of the world. That's good. Glory to God for that. But it will take process. It will take process. And in the process of time, friends, still be evangelizing. We are not saying because you have wealth, you will not evangelize again. We are saying you are going to evangelize, but your wealth is going to give you an advantage in your evangelism. Imagine some of these richest guys are the people who are really born again. And they come on national television and say, the secret of my wealth is that God has blessed me. It's not because of my intellect. I'm, I read. Ah, thank God I read. I have connections. I engage in tech. But it's a God that giveth me wealth. Imagine what that will do to the theology of many people. People's mindset will change over time. Those ones who have been shouting, it's not all about prayer. Their concept will change over time. I'm saying money help us to advance the gospel. So wealth, financial power is very important. Number two, governmental power. You see, sometimes we just feel it doesn't matter. It's not important. Politics is a dirty game. And so many believers today are not engaging, engaging in politics. That fears of influence have been, have been dead because believers have left it. Don't forget, I started by telling you that we are envoys upon the face of the earth. Meaning we are ambassadors. This is not our original home. We are just here for a time. Do you understand? That's what I started to tell you. In those days, I've seen through, through scriptures a couple of times where people are taken from Israel into Ezai. But you see, when God takes them to Ezai, he brings them to, a, to the place of authority and power. So Daniel said, John Mishael Abednego is taken into Babylon. And yet God brings them into the power, authority. And so for three administration, Daniel is relevant. So the question is, why is God taking Daniel to become so relevant in authority? Because Sama, for you to advance the gospel, you need political power. It was a few years ago, the, Cardona, the then Cardona said, Pres governor made some laws that was hindering the gospel. God's servant, Apostle John Suleiman spoke about it that, that time. Sir, if you are not there, you are not there. And those who are in the financial sector, they can just come and make one law from government. One law that can crumble your finances. And so it's important that we are not just people that have money. We are people that have influence in government. We are influential in government. The same thing is also said of Joseph. Joseph is taken to exile into Egypt and yet God make him a prime minister. Here we are, we are believers. We are pilgrims upon the face of this earth. This is not where we are going to stay. We are pilgrims here. But the Lord wants to make some of us governors. 
presidents. Some of us working with United Nations. Some of us having, having influence across the globe. Political influence. If truly God will help us to have political influence, one of the things that will happen is that laws that is going to be made that will, that will be anti the gospel will not be made. It will be easy for us to make policies that will make the fortress of the gospel to become easy. But there are many laws that hinder us from entering into certain nations. The colony nations today have become so difficult that for people to enter into the, 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 the communist government, sorry, have become difficult for people to penetrate. Some nations now, you can't take a Bible into it. Why is it so, the government? I heard of late, I don't know how, how, how true is it, but I, had, I, I saw it online. How that the China government has discovered that they can't eradicate the Bible. And so because of that, they have started editing the Bible so they can share to people. Brethren, let's take leadership serious. God has called you to, become a, to, be, to enter into politics and become a leader. It's not a dirty game. We are not there to play dirty politics. We are seeing men like Daniel in politics and yet his hand was pure. How I know his hand was pure? They were looking for a time to look for something to free him up so they can kill him. The Bible said they saw nothing. The only thing they saw was that he was a praying man. So prayer was the only thing they could use to hold him. I'm saying it's possible for a man to live in a corrupt environment and yet he's not corrupted. Yet he's not. Lot was in Sodom and Gomorrah but yet Sodom and Gomorrah was not in him. You can be in politics and yet the dirtiness of politics is not in you. Because you are seeing that, that first not just as a system for acquiring and massing wealth. It's a system for ministry. When you see politics as a, as a platform for ministry, it will become easy for you to penetrate the system. Easy for you to penetrate. We can't just leave it for the people of the world. We can't. We can't. And so now you have that trait of leadership in you. But you are killing it because they have told you. And you know, the, the unfortunate part is that the church today is the one that is killing young people from entering into politics. You rise, you want to enter into politics, they say, small boy like you. You want to stain your hand. If you know they will stain their hand, it means that the pastor is not teaching them well. If as a pastor you are doing your work well, you can vouch for this one. That the word in his mouth is, is, is so powerful. The word in his life is so powerful. The goal of pastoring is not so sheep, sheep can just stay under you for many years. It's so that you can bring them into the full stature and image of Christ. That's the goal. And if they become like Christ, we can send them into the, a sheep into the midst of wolves. And they will be as wise as serpents. And yet gentle as those. They will be ones that will not stain their hands. They won't swallow their hands with evil. If they are still swallowing their hands, it's because we are not trained them very well. And that is why it's, it's a responsibility saddled upon us that are called into the work of the ministry to give a holistic training to people. A balanced training. That at the end of the day, they will not be half-baked bread. Toast to and fro with every wings of doctrine. People that have no stand. A testimony from Hebrews chapter 5. Always, there are, are people that are always leading and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. For the time they ought to be teachers, they still need of being taught what we call the first principle of the kingdom. Still need of, 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 of meat and not of strong meat. If we cannot send our people into politics is because they have not been trained. We can't vouch for them. I'm praying that the Lord will help you. You that is watching that God have called into the, into the spheres of politics and leadership and praying that you will take time to sit down. And thank God, you know, the body of Christ is so unique that God has put strategic people in the body to raise these people. Pastor Sam Adeyemi is a unique leader expert who is training leaders in various stratas of influence. And so God has not left the body of Christ without people that are godly, with godly principles to teach them. 
Not, not gathering Christians and you are, you are teaching them laws of leadership from books of people who are stealing. Mafias here and there and you are teaching from those materials. No. It's gathering Christian believers and teaching them Christian leadership. Leadership principle from the Bible. It's amazing how we are going to copy leadership principle from people and yet we want our people not to be corrupt. You are recommending mafia manager to them. Then you want them not. The Bible is the, is the major material which you are going to be looking at for leadership. It has rich resources for leadership. Rich is enough. Will we pay reference to other materials? Yes. But the fundamental material we use is the Bible. And any, any principles of the word for leadership that is anti the Bible, we kick against it. And so, the governmental power is one major one. Number three, you know, when I was coming, I added this, this, this third, third one to it. It wasn't part of it, but I added it with the third one. Number three is media power. Media power. Media power. Psalm 68, verse 11. The Bible says that the Lord gave the word. Great were the company of those that publish it. And this is exactly what Eden TV is doing. That is what they represent. Great were the company of them that publish it. Sir, you will be joking to feel that media influence is rubbish. <laughs> People sit down from the confide of their rooms and make just a simple statement. And everybody is agitated about it. Everybody is agitated. There are some people that are, are that doing Buhari regime, the Excellency Buhari, doing his regime. Some people were arrested because they sat down in their room and just made a statement. They said, Don't you know, based on your influence, this statement you have made will make the youth to go to war. Did the person go to the person's room and say, Please, let's go and riot? No, he only made a post. Social media influence, you cannot kick it out in our contemporary times. It's one major tool that we used to reach the globe. You are here in Auchi or in a very part of the world and your, your voice is being heard abroad. So powerful. So powerful a tool. Some people have not had the privilege to step their legs into the US. But people are in the US and they are seeing their videos. Do you see how you can take the gospel to the nations? And here you jeopardize it and say it doesn't matter. You post once in four days. It's as the spirit leads. That is when you post. And you want to reach the nations. Look at some of these, some of these skit makers and these people of the world. They are posting every day, back to back. They are having content to post. But you are a Christian believer. And you don't have content. Yet you say you read your Bible every day. We say, how will you grow? Read your Bible. Pray every day. Pray every day. You are reading and praying every day with lack of revelation. So there is nothing to share on your social media platform. So even when you are sharing content, it's rubbish. So that is why they can't train. It's not rich enough. We are saying as believers, the media space is a big space for us to evangelize. A big space. Don't joke with that space. Don't. It's one great opportunity. I don't know, but I, I think I, I, I have the liberty to say it here. One of the privilege of sponsorship I have received in ministry is through the media space. Through the media space. You know, amazingly, I checked my, my stuff of late, um, my dashboard on Facebook of late, and I discovered that the least city Eh, that followed my things on Facebook is Auchi. And that is why I'm, that is why I'm Bezo, but that is the least people that followed. From different nations, they followed. And then you, you jeopardize that. Do you know how much sometimes people just see the, the write-ups online and they say, ah, this is so great, this is so mighty. Ah, oh, you, you are God of heaven. Send me your account number, let me be a blessing to you. Okay. That's it. But here you are sitting, you are asking, Makoporos Sovena, Lord, resources. The Lord is saying, do a post, do a post. Write something. You are grace, write. You have the grace for writing, write. 
put it in writing and spray it. You have a grace for sink it, sink and spray it. Don't say, ah, no, me, no. He was, he was teaching me, Eden TV boss was teaching me how they, is he, or Corey Grimm, how do they speak? How it works. A particular time to be posting. I say, okay. So I started learning how to post a particular time too. It helps. Don't sit down and just speak in tongues. How are these other guys trending with evil? Every skit you see, you are seeing breasts up and down. You, you are a comedian too and God is blessing you. You are a bit funny. Don't come up with a skit that will not be showing breasts and bum bum up and down. Come up with something that will preach the gospel. The media space is a big space. Let's not joke with it. It's where God is calling some of you to take it seriously. It's your platform for some of you. I've gotten Muslims saved on, on Facebook just having to chat them up. They see a post and chat me up and we are talking. There was one particular one I've been praying and talking to her for a time, for some time. She had asked for prayer requests. I've prayed for her. She had gotten answers and the rest of them. Just one of those things I started to ask her a few questions. I discovered, ah, she was a Muslim. A Muslim. But yes, she was seeing the post and chatting it up. She believed that God can answer her prayers. And right there, I had to lead her to the Lord. It was on chat. Stop waiting until you carry a megaphone in the morning and disturb people by 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock. When you can have other tools that you can meet to become more effective with this work they are giving to you. The media space is a powerful space. Don't despise it. And you know the funniest part of it? There are people who are in the media space that are not even wealthy, but they are influential. Do you understand? Yeah. There is this guy that is rising up now. I don't want to call his name, but he's, very, he's dark. He has chess. Do you understand? Yeah. Dark, he has chess. One room. One room. From that room to the nations. From that room, he's doing crazy things. You, your own room is even finer. You have nice light. They are saying, sir, it's quality. Start from where you are. Let, let's trace back and say, I. When he started, that is how the video was, so he was very poor. Now the video is very rich. Use what you have. Use what you have. The media space. Lastly, number four is spiritual power. Spiritual power. Spiritual power. Let me show you a scripture. First Kings chapter 19. If you can use anyone, you can use me. You can use me. If you can send anyone, you can send me. You can send me. I don't know if you are in the media space. I, I have a grace to pray for you right now. There is a liberty. I pray that Father, in the name of Jesus, release grace upon Christians now that are in the media space. Let them become influential. Okay. Bible says Jesus came down from the mountain. He was full of the spirit and power. And his fame was spread abroad. I'm saying there is a spirit that can come upon a thing that you are doing. The breath of the almighty can come upon it and take it to the nations. You, this thing is not about just the, the, the posting daily. There is a place for that. Yeah. But there is a grace that can cause expansion and increase. And I pray for every one of you in the media sector that the Lord is going to give you wisdom to expand Span your content to the nations of the world. He will breathe upon your materials and take you through the space of time. In the name of Jesus, that grace is released. Amen. Spiritual powers. First King 19, verse 15 to 17, the Bible says, And the Lord said unto him, Go return on the way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when thou comest, anoint Hazalel to be king over Syria. Now this was Elijah God was speaking to. Remember, Elijah had run away from Jezebel. And you see, prophetically, Jezebel is not just a king's wife. Jezebel is a, is a spiritual force of darkness that causes people not to do the will of God. And here was a prophet who just killed people. 
prophets of Baal and called down fire from heaven. Yet a woman said, I'm coming for you and he's running away. But God is saying, there are three systems that can overcome Jezebel. And he said, the first thing you should do is to anoint Hazalel to be king over Syria. And that time, Syria was the economical headquarter of the world. And so what he was saying is that anoint Bezalel, Hezalel to become king over the economy. And that is what we spoke about the financial sector. The financial sector. God is raising people, anointing. That is why you see it's not just an ordinary thing about money. It's an anointing for wealth. Kai. An anointing for wealth. Supernatural wealth. They are wealth of the spirit. This is not just about, you see, the system is that you do a business this year. The first year, you don't make profit out of it. The profit is being returned back into the business. And it takes five years before the business can really become, it become a brand. So, there is an anointing that can make it possible in one year. An anointing for it. That's what it is. An anointing. You see a first star go and make a ritual and all of a sudden money appears in his house. Where did the money come from? Where did it come from? Sir, I came to tell you mammon is a spirit. It's not just a normal thing. You see, for example, alright, we are using a specific place now. Let me use that for example. Right? You see, Apostle John, Apostle John Suleiman, right, is a human being. Do you understand? But he's a human being carrying a prophetic spirit. There are other things he do in ministry. But one thing that, is ampli that amplifies the ministry is the prophetic grace upon his life. So he's a carrier of the prophetic spirit. But the body that carries it, you don't see the spirit. What you see is a man. Eh? Money is a spirit. You don't see the spirit. The spirit is called mammon. What you see is the currency. is the dollar. is the pounds. is the euro. But the real spirit, you don't see it. There are people that have that thing with them. They have it. They have it. And so that is what you see. Those guys can make sacrifice and rituals and money appear in the houses. And overnight, they become millionaires. How? A spirit is following them. Brethren, the Lord will anoint people to enter into those spheres so they can be able to advance the gospel. We need wealth to advance the gospel. There is a law that needs to be anointed over Syria, over the economy. The Lord is raising that generation. He's raising them. Verse 16. And Jehu, the son of Nimsha, shall thou anoint to be king over Israel. That is the governmental system. That is where kingship was. Glory to God. It's an anointing. You say, oh, you say, you say for example, our excellency, the ex-president, good luck, Abilene Jonathan, you saw that it was just from small, small. Vice President, not that he will be contest for the major one. He just contests for the assistant. And all of a sudden, he emerged to become governor. All of a sudden, he just came as Vice President, ordinary Vice President. And all of a sudden, he become, and you just say, it's just coincidence. It, that guy is just lucky. Kata, baka, palata. Sir, it's not luck. It's a spirit. The spirit that enthroned men into kingship. Spirit. A locatement for any part of the world. You are saying, sir, I'm just an ordinary person in Nigeria. In the, the economy is so bad. I don't know how these prophecies of the Lord making me a national, international leader is going to come to pass. I say the spirit of the Almighty shall come upon you. That's what it is. That's what makes us to stand out. The spirit of the Almighty. That same spirit have the ability to search you out wherever you are. Someone is here to anoint a king, looking for someone to put the oil upon. And he discovered that all the mighty men that he should come upon is not the one. He said, We are going to wait. When your season and time comes, it doesn't matter who are the qualified people there, they will wait until you come. That anointing is what makes kings to wait for you, it's what makes your name to be mentioned in high places beyond your comprehension. Your name is mentioned in high places. And you see, all of a sudden, they, see, it's one prayer I pray consistently. Lord, mention my name in high places. Cause men to mention my name in high places. There's an anointing for kingship. And then lastly, he said, anoint Elisha. And then in verse 16, or verse 17, which is my emphasis now. The Bible says, it shall come to pass that him that escaped the sword of Ezalel. So, 
if you escape the soul of the financial sector, the person is in the financial sector, there is so much money and it seem as if there is no result. Evangelism, let me be sincere with you, you have the money, you can have mega crusades and the rest of them. What will get people saved is not the money. The money is just an end to it means. It's not the means itself. And so anyone that the sword of the Hezalel escape. Because we are talking about, because contextually we're talking about the spirit of Jezebel. Anyone the, that Babylonian spirit, anyone the swirl of Jezalel of, of, of Hezalel escape, what will happen is that the swirl of Jehu is going to hit them. That is the governmental and political power. But there could come a time when that political power can fail also. And anyone the swirl of Jehu could not touch, Elisha will kill. It's called spiritual power. Sir, have the money for the crusade, have governmental approval. But when you get to the crusade ground, what you need is Agbara. <laughs> it's power. The gospel is not just preached, it's seen. It is. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. They seen and hearing the miracles which he did. How do you want to enter into territories without power? I'm saying not every believer now currently have finances. Not every one of them have leadership and, and political power. But you saw, no matter how small you are in the faith, make sure you carry power. Make sure you carry power. Compelling power. Ha, ah, Paul the Apostle, we, we, we tell the Corinthians, so he said, my speech and my preaching were not with the enticing words of man wisdom, but in the demonstration of the spirit and of power. What will break men down in tears? What will break them under conviction? It's not just the money that you carry. It is the power within. It's called spiritual power. A compelling power and a hazard. That's what you need to have. God himself understood this and he said, say, tarry in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. Tarry. For ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost shall come upon you. Acts of the Apostles chapter 4 verse 33 with great power give the apostle witness of the resurrection and great grace was upon them all. You want to be a believer that is going to have a mighty harvest of souls. I'm saying you need power. And this power is not just to fall people up and down. It's a power that has the ability to break the heart of people. To convince even those who are doubters that surely there is a God that exists. Surely there is a God. Surely. No. The gospel is not for too much talking. No. Not too much talking. You see, with some of the scriptures that I love, it's in Acts of the Apostles chapter 3. And Peter looking at that crippled guy, he said, silver and gold I have not. That is to say, sir, you see this wealth thing is good though, but not every believer now will come to the cave that way they are going to be so wealthy and influential and have power over in the media space. But you see, such as I have, such as I have, give I unto you. What do you have that you can give? What depth of power? Luke chapter 10. Behold, he gave unto them power. Here you are. What depth of power do you have in your life? You want souls to be saved. You are saying, why is sinners not repenting? Why are they not being broken? I'm saying, what depth of power? Thank God for dear brothers that are doing Christian apologetics here and there. They are, they are, they are hitting some milestones. But sir, men will debate with you so much when there is no power. You want to come to a point where you are not just debating on crusade ground. You are not just debating in evangelism, but you are seeing mighty results. I'm saying carry the power of God. Tangible power. An expression of power. Don't be a weakling Christian. Brethren, if you can enter into these four stages of evangelism, tools, it will be easy for you, sir. But for adventure, the first three I mentioned, you don't have the privilege to step into them. Please, make sure you carry power. Don't meet your generation without power. Bible says, without signs and wonders, they will not believe. How would they know that your God is a good God? How would they know that God truly sent you? <laughs> when Moses was about to be sent, Moses said, Kai, if I go, what do I say? The I am that I am sent me. If I go to Pharaoh and say that, he, he, he's not going to listen to me. He said, no problem. 
throw your rod on the ground. There is another level of language that produces with God result. It's called power. Power. Brethren, we want to reach the nations of the world, preach the gospel and see so saved. It must be by the power of the Spirit. We cannot be debating like every other person. You must show power. You must show power. Must. Some, some years ago, I could remember my late mentor, Reverend Isaac Godwin, we just went to his house that day and he was sharing burden of soul winning with us. It was so intense. And we left that place with body in our heart. It was already in the night. That was what started our night evangelism. It was already in the night. And while we were on our way, we said, let us start evangelizing this night. And we met some Muslim boys sitting. We really didn't know they were Muslim. And as we told them we wanted to share the word of God with them, they said no. They don't want to hear. And while we were about to take our leave, a name entered our spirit. As we said the name out, guys, eh? I'm the one. What is it? And we begin to God begin to give prophetic words. And all of a sudden, they that said we should go sat down and they were listing him. Sir, you need the power of God. You can't penetrate regions just with words. Mere speaking, no, sir. No, no. When there is a need for a prophetic word it should be able to flow. When there is need for the sick to be healed, it should show. It should. We have had the privilege to have crusades around villages. I've had the privilege to preach in cities too. Sir, this thing called power is a language that is spoken everywhere and it produces the same results. Everywhere and produces the same results. Stop being powerless. And amazingly, this thing that I'm talking about is not just for people who are in, 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 in preaching ministry as it well, or who are in the fivefold office. No. It's not just for them. Right. Do you remember the church that was built in Antioch? Do you remember the church that was built in Antioch? It was one of the biggest church. Mighty church. Reason. That was the church that believers were first called Christians in. That was the church. Mighty church. But the question is, who started the church? Who started it? It was ordinary men that, that ran away from Jerusalem upon the persecution of Stephen. And they ran to, to Cyrene and Antioch. And as they went there, they, they started preaching the word. They were the ones that laid the foundation of the church of Antioch. It was when the church started expanding that the disciples in Jerusalem heard about it, then they sent Barnabas to them. And they sent, and, and Barnabas went and first saw, and they came to the church. But who laid the foundation of such a mighty work? It was lay ministers. Stop thinking this thing is a pastor thing. I started holding crusade and doing crazy things for the Lord as an ordinary believer. Ordinary believer. Go for crusades and come back. Tangible result. And still carry the offering basket in church and enjoy when that became a thing just two years ago. Brethren, you can carry the power of God. No matter your age, no matter your level of qualification. You may not have money now, but you have power. And sir, if you have power, the money will come very soon. <laughs> it will, sir. It's just a matter of time. You will see that your finances will break forth. Will break forth. People have the money with them, but they don't have power. They are suffering from sickness. If you can heal them, the money will enter your bank account. <laughs> you see, your money is passing by you because you don't have power. That is why your church member has spending money in hospital anyhow. Those money could be entering your bank account. Sir, carry power. Don't give too much explanation why it doesn't work. Stay until it works. If one person has done it, they have canceled the excuse that you have. Stay. Stay until you are soaked in it. Lift up your voice and give God praise. Oh, Salamando Freskete Varas Katabaya. Zevenondo Freskete Varaski Paraska Paratai. Mombre Keske Brohozo Vere Kataya. Jesus. I pray for as many who are watching. If you're having any infirmities of sickness in your body, 
those who are watching live and those who will see this video, I pray for you right now by the Spirit of the Lord. Every infirmity in your body, I command it to disappear right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I release the healing power of God. I take authority over every sickness and every disease. Every terminal disease that they have, they have pronounced upon your life. As God's prophet, I command it to live right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for your finances. I command it to shift. In the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for those in leadership. I pray that your voice will be heard. Your voice will not be muted and your men will not be few. The Lord will send you helpers and he will send you men. In critical moments, men will arise for you. In the mighty name of Jesus, let your name be mentioned in high places. And then let the Lord cause your name to be spread abroad. In the name of Jesus. I pray for those in the media sector also. I've prayed for you before and I still prayed for you. That your voice will be heard. The grace of influence is landing upon you. In the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for those into ministry. You will not have to give too many explanations. The power of God will be visible upon your life. In the name of Jesus. Friends in ministry, please give yourself to fasting and prayers. Don't give reasons why the power of God is not working. If one person can do it, you can do it. You can. And don't forget, subscribe to this YouTube channel and click the notification button. God bless you. Que pedi brandia capapali prakatas que pedi brandia capia capi. This is a good time to pray. You do not receive such word and you just go away. Jesus, baratia capapapali prakatia kis que pedatia capapapalu prakates. Baratia katia 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 capapapali barakatia katia capapapali barados. Oya ya caparia katia katia capapapalu pratis que pedatia capapapali prati. Oh Jesus, Palati skepe di prakati aka papa papa di prakatatas. Make no mistake and say you are watching online. There's no distance in the spirit. I can see the tangible presence of God in this room, and I believe you can feel it wherever you are watching us. Paratis, eya ya kapali parakati aka papa papa di paraka papa papa papa. Eya ya kate papa papa di parati ate papa papa di parati aka papa papa di parakati aka papa parati aka papa papa di parati. Oh Jesus, you gave your word, you gave the word, Lord. You gave the word, you gave the word, you gave the word. And great was the company of those that published it. I shall not be small, I shall not be small. This is the time for you to begin to declare the word of the Lord over your life. I shall not be small, I shall not be small. Parate, the word of the Lord prospers in my hands. The word of the Lord is prosper, is prosper, is prosper. I will not give excuse. I will not give excuse. No, no. I will not give excuse why the word of the Lord will not prosper in my generation. Parate, whatever it takes, I will pray. I will fast. And I will give. Parate. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, how I wish we can continue. How I wish. How I wish we can continue. But this is where we have to end it on worship and word this week. We want to say thank you for our guest ministers. Minister Lovett, we thank you. Thank you for the rich atmosphere that you brought. Thank you, Pastor Mervin. We do not take this privilege for granted. We honor you and with our prayer that the Lord will continue to strengthen you. God will bless you. God's oil upon your head will never run dry and your garment will forever be spotless. Thank you, Jesus, to our followers. We encourage you to subscribe. Stay tuned to this channel. See you next week. You don't want to miss next week episode. We'll be having our mother in the house, Pastor Mrs. Bola Majai. So stay tuned. She'll be here to bless us mightily. See you next week. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.